Hey, this is John Christopher, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create custom roles for managing the various permissions over our Azure resources. A lot of people realize that Microsoft gives us the ability to utilize built-in roles for managing permissions, but did you know you can customize things and actually gain even more control over the way things are going to work in your environment? So that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Also, I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe and understand that I also have courses that are between 12 and 15 hours long on all the various Microsoft IT related certifications, or I should say most of them. Please check the link in the description because I have coupon codes for getting those for only like $9.99 a lot of times and all that fun stuff. All right, with that said, we're going to jump into the video now. I'd now like to spend some time helping you understand how we manage Azure resources in regards to permissions with roles in Azure. Now, it's it should already be kind of known that if I go to portal.azure.com and I click the menu button and I go down to Microsoft Intra ID, I can go right here to uh, where, it, where you can manage roles from an Intra ID perspective. Okay, now that can be done right here, roles and administrators, and this is going to be how we manage our roles and all that when it comes to admins managing intra and all the intra services. This also carries over to Microsoft 365. However, what about permissions to your Azure resources themselves? Okay, like let's, let's say you were going to host some virtual machines and all of that stuff in Azure. How are we managing permissions to that? So essentially the way that manage, the way that is managed is everything in Azure is stored in a resource group. A resource group is a container that contains resources. So I would go over here to the menu button. I click on resource groups and currently I don't have any resource groups in this instance of my tenant. Now in your environment, you may have some uh, resource groups here. You do not have to see the exact same thing I see on my screen right now. So don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to create a resource group, and that's really the only resource group that matters in the instance of what I'm showing you right here. So I'm going to click Create. All right. I'm going to tie this to my subscription, and then uh, Resource Group. I'm just going to call this Resource Group. I'm going to call it um, VM Role uh, Permissions Demo. That's just going to be what I call it, okay? And then I'm just going to click Review and Create, and then I'm going to click Create. So now that that resource group is created, I could now put resources inside of it, such as virtual machines. So if I click on this, I could start adding resources. But really what I want to show you here is I want to show you how we manage the permissions of this resource group and then the resources that go in it. So that's all managed using this right here, Access Control, also known as the I am blade. I am stands for identity and access management. So if I click that, you're going to see right here that I can click add and I can add role assignment. I can have a, add a co-administrator and a custom role. Now add role assignment, these are just the standard roles where you can give permissions, various permissions to somebody to uh, be able to perform the various actions that you might want them to be able to perform. And you can see the different roles that are available. You can click view and you can see the permissions. But what we need to focus on in this video is custom. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go back here and I want to click add and I want to click add custom role. Now, before we get too deep in this, I want you to understand that one of the reasons you're going to create a custom role is because perhaps the there is not already a role that does what you want it to do. Now the other thing to understand is when it comes to managing roles within Azure you have something called the control plane and then you've got something called the data plane. If you actually do a a quick Google or Bing search on these keywords Azure control plane and data plane you'll find this little article right here if you want to look deeper into it. And they give sort of an idea. They tell you that Azure's operations are essentially going to be divided into two different categories, the control and the data plane. And the idea is you're going to use the control plane to manage resources in your subscription itself. And then you'll use the data plane to utilize the, the capabilities exposed by whatever that resource is. So in other words, the control plane 
is going to be managing the actual resource itself. So like, let's say, uh, in my case, the resource group is a resource in, in itself, but then a VM would be also a resource inside there. Okay, so the control plane is going to help me manage permissions to that resource, but then the data plane is essentially what data gets exposed and can be seen and managed by other people, accessed, managed, all of that by other people. Okay, so they give an example even. Uh, it says you create a virtual machine through the control plane, right? After the virtual machine is created, you interact with it through the data plane, such as with RDP, where you would connect into it. Another example, you create a storage account through the control plane, use the data plane to read and write data into the control account, the, uh, the storage account. Okay, so that's sort of the idea. Here's another one. You create a Cosmos database through the control plane you, to, to query the Azure Cosmos database, you use the data plane. So that's sort of how uh, Azure looks at it all. All requests from the control plane operations are sent using an Azure Resource Manager URL, AR, ARM, Azure Resource Manager URL. And the URLs will vary based on what you're basically doing here. So it's all handled through URL-based um, actions, okay? Using the REST API, a representational state transfer, and all that. Don't really have to dive that deep into, into all that for this. But that's the idea of the control plane and data plane. Now, if I come over here, let's say I want to create a role. I'm just going to call it VM Management for virtual machine management. We can clone an existing role, start from scratch, or if you really want to get down and dirty and you know JSON, JavaScript object notation, you could write that that code if you wanted. But we'll say start from scratch, and then we'll click next. And then at that point, we got to add permissions. So we're going to click add permissions. And I'm just going to search for the keywords compute. You can just select it. You can find it and select it. And then from there, I'll search keywords compute right here and then I'm going to scroll down and let's find virtual machines. There's a bunch of these virtual machine scale sets, but we're going to go below that and look for here it is. microsoft.compute slash virtual machines. So let's say we just want to we want to create three different writes here, read, write, and delete. Okay. So from there, I'm going to set those three permissions. So we'll click add. All right, now you can also have exclude permissions if there is a situation where you want to um, exclude something in particular. All right, and they tell you that you can click add, but also to add a wildcard, a star, you must manually add the permissions in uh, on the JSON tab. So you'd have to come over here and look at the JSON side of all of this and, uh, and add a star for a wildcard. Now you have a learn more article where you can you can read more about that and they tell you the idea here is depending on how you choose to start you might have permissions with wildcards a wildcard is going to extend the permission to everything that matches the action string you uh, you provide all right um, so basically everything that comes after something you're saying hey I want to grant this based on that wildcard um, that's not super critical, but I did want to explain that just briefly to you. And then you also can exclude to exclude specific permissions from a wildcard. They tell you the same thing. They provide a little article about that as well. So if you want to exclude permissions here, you can. Um, that's all, you know, all doable. Now, if there's ever a situation where you have include permissions that um, conflict with exclude permissions because perhaps it's a, a wild card or something grouped in with another set of permissions. Exclude will always override include permissions. Okay, so any of the uh, included base permissions that we have here, so where I say add permissions, those are include based types of permissions. Uh, exclude will, will override. Okay, so at that point we click review and create. We will click create. All right, this says you have successfully created the custom role via management. It does tell you that it will take several minutes. Um, it could take up several minutes or a few minutes to display within your roles. Okay, so at that point, we've now created a custom role. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video.